modern uh, library catalogs like Evergreen uh, that make full use of indicators and fixed fields are an excellent uh, error cor uh, correction tool for markup records. Um, it can be really obvious uh, if uh, uh, your leader is wrong or uh, your uh, 007 is wrong, leading uh, to, say, the wrong icon uh, uh, being uh, displayed in the public uh, catalog. Um, and another way of looking at it uh, is, you know, the modern library catalog uh, is arguably the revenge of uh, the indicators uh, for having been, if not ignored, uh, perhaps uh, underfunded uh, or uh, not having uh, enough uh, attention paid uh, to them over uh, the years. Um, a more positive uh, way of uh, putting uh, this is that the modern library catalog is a way to make the full use of literally decades of uh, detailed uh, work by many, many uh, catalogers over uh, the years. So Evergreen, of course, uh, already does a lot uh, with MARC records. Um, Evergreen's uh, indexing is uh, based on the MARC records. Um, the MARC records uh, display, uh, you know, drive uh, the display of all aspects of public catalog and staff interface uh, display. And uh, many, many uh, attributes uh, are driven uh, or extracted uh, from uh, the MARC records. But what it will be doing with uh, this presentation is showing you some ways that you can go beyond uh, the box. And by that, I mean the box of uh, what uh, is available uh, in Evergreen um, using uh, stock uh, data. So what it will be doing is doing a deep dive uh, into the record attributes uh, system, uh, showing how it, uh, it uh, can be uh, used uh, for searching, how you can add uh, new uh, uh, custom record attributes, and um, how you can maintain them. I will also be talking a bit uh, about uh, located uh, URIs. Completely different uh, topic, um, but one that, uh, of course, matters uh, quite a lot uh, for electronic uh, resource management uh, in Evergreen. So this would be a pretty poor presentation uh, about uh, MARC records if I didn't actually show you one. Um, so, you know, I made uh, the discovery uh, really recently uh, that there's a totally awesome musical uh, out there called Hades at Town that I would love uh, to uh, see uh, one day once, uh, you know, circumstances are permit. So, what I've done is I will be using uh, the record for the original cast of recording of Hades uh, Town uh, as uh, the primary example for the rest of uh, this presentation. And one of the nice things about this particular record uh, is uh, that, as you can see, it's uh, a one uh, that has uh, been kept up uh, to date uh, with the evolution of uh, Mark 21 and uh, the application of uh, RDA uh, to Mark. Um, so that's a long-winded uh, way of uh, keep uh, your eyes on those uh, 3, 3 x and 3, 4 x uh, fields, uh, since uh, we will be doing quite a lot uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, them. So when I talk about uh, Mark uh, record uh, attributes uh, in Evergreen, what I'm talking about is a system uh, in Evergreen for inspecting the MARC record uh, and drawing uh, sets of values that are, for the most part, uh, controlled values uh, from things like uh, fixed uh, fields, uh, and particularly with uh, the advent uh, of uh, RDA um, records uh, from the, uh, quote, new fields, uh, including uh, the various uh, 
uh, the 264, uh, the 33X, so the 34X, and so forth. And what, F, what record attributes uh, in F-Green um, look like uh, in the database um, is a little complicated, um, but it basically boils uh, down to uh, fields or labels and values. Um, so the audience uh, you know, coming straight from a fixed field uh, representing uh, the um, general audience language, ENG, uh, the um, uh, uh, the um, language code, media type uh, from um, you know, the 33X, and so forth. Um, and these values uh, that I'm going to explain here are what uh, come with uh, the record attributes uh, that uh, are a stock uh, in uh, Evergreen. Um, so if we then move on to the question of what's the point of it, um, the, rec uh, the record attributes, um, among other things, let you uh, do uh, searches and uh, filtering. Um, so what I have uh, here is a screenshot of a search uh, media underscore type uh, parentheses audio. That's making use of Evergreen's uh, uh, search syntax uh, for filtering uh, you know, results. But since uh, the search is only at uh, the filter, this is basically saying, uh, please uh, show me all records whose media type uh, is audio. Um, so, you know, with that, um, we uh, can then, you know, look at another aspect uh, that we'll be uh, digging into later in the presentation, which is, you know, display. Um, so you will notice uh, that uh, there's an icon uh, for CD music uh, recording. Um, and that uh, is ultimately, uh, you know, driven uh, by one uh, of the uh, stock attributes, in this case, icon format, uh, which is driven uh, by fixed uh, fields and uh, is used by the public uh, catalog uh, to uh, display um, uh, to select uh, which uh, material icon uh, to uh, display. So now that uh, we uh, see what's possible uh, with uh, record attributes, let's uh, go ahead and create a new one. So one of uh, the uh, things uh, that RDA uh, has uh, given, uh, given, of, uh, given us, uh, of course, is a large number of uh, additional mark uh, tags. So for this, I'm going to uh, focus on the 340 in uh, particular. Uh, the 340A is uh, the material base and configuration, uh, which is uh, a slightly verbose uh, way of uh, saying what is uh, the item physically made of. Um, so this uh, is a CD. Um, a compact disc is primarily made of plastic with a tiny bit of uh, metal or film. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, four and three quarter inches uh, in uh, diameter. So out of the box, Evergreen doesn't do anything with uh, the 340. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out how to change that. that. So in uh, the Evergreen staff interface, if you go to server administration, um, there is uh, you know, a page uh, for configuring record uh, attributes uh, 
and you know the uh, record editor is uh, calling it uh, the SVF record attribute uh, definition um, single value, uh, although that's actually a bit of a slightly um, outdated, outdated uh, terminology because record attributes can be single value, uh, they can be multi value. Um, if uh, we jump uh, back, we'll see that this particular record has two uh, 340As. Uh, it's both metal and plastic. Um, and Evergreen can be configured uh, to store both of those as uh, being values of the material base uh, attribute uh, for uh, this uh, record. So if uh, we go through what uh, the definition is, um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, the, a, uh, this is not a composite attribute. A composite attribute is a way of uh, saying you want to combine different attributes uh, together into a kind of meta attribute. Um, but this is only pulling uh, from a mark field. The description is hopefully uh, a helpful one. Uh, this is mostly for staff use. Um, this is going to be acting as a filter. Um, so checking the filter box tells uh, the F-Green search engine that you do want uh, to be able to limit search of results uh, by this attribute. Um, this is not a fixed uh, field um, and uh, we're not uh, joining multiple instances uh, together. Um, we can give it a label. Uh, the label uh, is essentially whatever you want it uh, to be. Uh, and the, um, you, know, the, you know, the instructions uh, for where to grab uh, this attribute, in this case, are being driven by a mark tag and subfield. We've uh, checked uh, the multi-value uh, box uh, because unlike, uh, say, um, something driven by the leader, there can be more uh, than one value for this attribute in a given record. And uh, we've uh, given this uh, a name. And the name here uh, is uh, what uh, gets used in areas like uh, the search engine. So we've chosen very creatively material underscore base as uh, the uh, name. Um, so if uh, we uh, go ahead and move on, um, we can go to another aspect of uh, configuration, which is the coded uh, value maps. And the coded value maps are a way of establishing a fixed uh, controlled vocabulary uh, that is tied uh, to an attribute. So in this case, uh, I've defined a couple. The coded uh, value maps uh, is also uh, available uh, via server administration. Um, and what we're saying is for the material base attribute, um, we have code uh, plastic, value plastic. You could choose uh, to have the value be a different uh, display uh, level, uh, you know, display name, uh, and similarly one uh, for metal. So what coded value maps do uh, is a couple of things. One is they serve as a way of uh, imposing uh, some con constraints on uh, your attributes, as in it makes it easy under the hood to run a report to identify records that have an attribute, but whose uh, value is not on uh, the coded value, or dare I say, authorized uh, list. Um, so, you know, 
And it also serves a function for search uh, performance. Um, values that uh, for an attribute that are on the coded uh, value map uh, are internally represented as numbers or integers in the database. And the underlying uh, search uh, system mechanism that applies search filters based on attributes um, essentially can use uh, those integers to very efficiently identify uh, the records uh, that meet uh, a filter condition uh, based uh, on uh, an attribute. Um, so having said that, um, the coded value maps are useful uh, for uh, controlling uh, the vocabulary where it makes uh, sense to do so, but they are not straight uh, jackets. In other words, it is just possible to say that uh, an attribute can be uncontrolled, that whatever you find in the uh, fixed field you're using or whatever you find uh, in the mark uh, field and subfield will get represented uh, in, in uh, the attribute um, exactly as uh, it is uh, you know, stored uh, in uh, the mark record. Um, so with that, um, you, know, you get both control and uh, flexibility. Now, if you wanted to, uh, you could um, define attributes uh, for any mark field you choose uh, to. So if you really wanted, you could in fact uh, define an attribute, uh, a record attribute uh, for uh, the 245A. However, that isn't something I would recommend uh, because it won't work uh, particularly effectively as a filter, um, you know, nor uh, will it uh, be, um, you know, particularly useful in uh, display purposes. Now, one thing I should uh, point out is Evergreen uh, also has a, a concept of uh, display entries, and that's uh, something you can configure to say, okay, I want to grab my title from a, a certain uh, field and subfield, or I want to grab uh, the title as expressed uh, by the mark record transformed uh, into mods and you know, make it a display where I needed it to. And that, by the way, is the mechanism uh, that will end uh, the tyranny of lowercase uh, titles uh, in uh, reports. Um, long time, uh, you know, Evergreen users, uh, you know, I'm sure have, you know, repeatedly run into situations where doing reports uh, against uh, certain record sources and displaying fields like title and author uh, have uh, the values uh, show up strictly in lowercase. Um, as opposed uh, to what you would expect uh, uh, from uh, the values uh, as uh, they're uh, stored in uh, the mark record. Um, display entries, uh, you know, fix uh, that problem uh, since uh, they let you control how uh, the display values are extracted uh, from uh, the mark record and uh, they don't uh, force uh, lowercase on you. So, Enough uh, with uh, that uh, digression. Um, before uh, I continue with the presentation, uh, I do want to pause uh, briefly uh, and see if uh, there are uh, any uh, questions. Um, I, uh, for some reason, I was able to see that there were chat messages uh, showing up. Um, uh, but not actually see the content of them. So Debbie, just uh, checking in. 
Yep, there's, um, there was just a question about whether the slides would be available and I said yes. Um, and at the moment, there are no other questions. So folks, if you have any, please type them in the chat or the Q&A or raise your hand. Okay, thank you, uh, Debbie. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I will also say that if you do have questions, uh, uh, I suggest using the Q&A uh, because Unlike uh, the chat, uh, for some reason, uh, I, you know, I am able to see the Q&A. All right, so let's uh, go ahead uh, and move on. And OK, I say that, uh, and uh, the chat uh, window uh, uh, you know, makes it, you know, come, bubbles up uh, to the top uh, for me. So OK, great. Technology is wonderful, isn't it, uh, folks? Um, so <laughs> now that uh, we have um, coded value maps uh, in place, I was talking about uh, controlled vocabulary. Well, that's actually something we can do uh, in the MARC editor. Um, Evergreen uh, does uh, store tag tables in the, the database. Uh, they define the bark tags and subfields, as well as uh, the display labels uh, for them. Uh, but one thing the, they can also do is to associate uh, a coded uh, value map with a bark uh, you know, uh, subfield. And I have did this uh, for my example. Uh, and as you can see from uh, the screenshot, uh, for fields uh, like the 340, um, you can make it possible to uh, right click uh, and you know, get a list of valid uh, values uh, for this uh, subfield. And this, by the way, isn't something, is not uh, tied specifically to record attributes. This is uh, something you could uh, define uh, for any field uh, in uh, the uh, MARC record. So for example, if uh, you say, uh, you know, add notes to your records, um, identifying the source of a donation, um, you could uh, define a drop down uh, for this uh, to say, okay, um, you know, rather than uh, you know, uh, you know, having to type out uh, each time of the full. Uh, donated uh, by um, the uh, Society for the Relief of Lost uh, Ducklings, uh, you could associate uh, a value map with that subfield and select it uh, from a dropdown. Now, this is not exclusive. Um, you, uh, you know, even if a field has a value map associated with it, you can also type in uh, whatever you want. Um, so the theme of uh, both control and uh, flexibility uh, applies uh, to this, um, uh, this uh, mechanism. So um, you will notice uh, a big asterisk in the slide uh, title. As much as I would like to blame uh, my cat uh, for that, um, the asterisk um, does represent um, a caveat, uh, and that's at the moment uh, the way that uh, you would associate uh, a coded value map with a MARC uh, subfield is uh, by doing a database update. Um, in this case, uh, specifically to the table uh, config uh, dot mark uh, subfield. Um, there are uh, you know, interfaces uh, in server administration to change uh, the tag uh, tables. Um, but uh, as I discovered uh, while I was preparing this presentation, uh, they are a little buggy uh, and uh, will uh, require a little work. That said, uh, if uh, your local friendly uh, Evergreen uh, administrator has SQL access, uh, it is an easy update uh, to uh, associate uh, value lists uh, to mark tags uh, and uh, subfields. 
So moving on from the staff side mark editor to uh, the public uh, catalog, um, what I'm showing here is the result of uh, defining the attribute. Um, and that is that uh, you can do a search. Uh, the name of the attribute, uh, in this case, material underscore base, with the value you're looking for in parentheses. And this uh, gives me uh, a way to identify all of uh, the items in uh, the catalog uh, that are made of metal, even if it's uh, just uh, tiny bits of metal in uh, the case of uh, CDs. Um, and, you know, this is uh, something uh, that was done without requiring any code uh, changes whatsoever. Um, so if uh, there's uh, been some new mark uh, tags uh, that you've uh, been eyeing and wondering if um, you'll ever be able to make a use of them for Evergreen, um, the power uh, and capability already exists to do a lot uh, without uh, having to write a single uh, line of uh, Perl or JavaScript. So that that's a pretty useful. Um, and of course, you know, one of uh, the things uh, on a policy level that this uh, can lead to is uh, the ability to say, you know, if you're, you're doing a mark uh, cleanup uh, project, um, you know, or specifically a record enhancement uh, project, uh, to be able to say, not only are we bringing in uh, records uh, that uh, adhere uh, to modern cataloging standards, but we're able to drive uh, specific uh, user visible functionality with them. So um, we have a question. Um, I would like to create a record attribute for the 347 subfield three for audio enabled book and one for 347 subfield B for MP3 audio book. Where can I start? And create, uh, can I create a filter that looks only at that uh, particular tag uh, and subfield? And the answer uh, to that is yes. Um, by create, you know, in this case, depending on exactly how uh, you wanted to do it, you could create two attributes, one drawing from the 347 subfield three and another one drawing from the uh, 347 uh, subfield B. And once you create that filter and uh, attribute rather, and once you've uh, created coded uh, value maps for those attributes, uh, although that's, um, you know, something uh, that's uh, optional. Um, you know, you could choose to leave uh, the attributes as uh, drawing from uncontrolled uh, values. Either way, those uh, attributes almost immediately become uh, available uh, to uh, create search filters. Now, in the material underscore base example on the slide in front of you, um, the way you're accessing that filter is uh, by um, typing in it in using Evergreen's uh, search uh, syntax. But that isn't uh, the only way to do it. Um, you could uh, also, um, with uh, some customization of your OPAC uh, templates, choose to say make uh, an OPAC, you know, drop down for uh, material uh, base, uh, or you could, um, you know, do things like uh, establish permit links to say, I want to have a search that shows me all of uh, the glass globes uh, in uh, my uh, collection. Um, now in the example of uh, the question about uh, the um, 
you know, two subfields so from uh, the 347, um, what you potentially could also choose uh, to do um, is uh, to consider setting up uh, a composite attribute um, that draws uh, from both uh, subfields. So thank you uh, for that uh, question. Um, Yo, know, so we've uh, discussed, um, you know, searching, but, you know, before uh, I continue, um, I'm now going to talk about uh, the bits uh, that I hand waved and that you would have seen me hand wave uh, if I had uh, my uh, video uh, camera on. Um, and that's, you know, there is uh, a bit of uh, work that you have to do uh, after, you, after you define an attribute. Um, so if you create an attribute, um, that's uh, basically saying, here is uh, something I would like to uh, take uh, from my mark records. Um, but defining the attribute doesn't uh, automatically, you know, create the, the actual attributes uh, for each uh, record. Um, you do have to index it. So one way you can do that uh, as you're experimenting with an attribute is simply saving uh, some records uh, that have uh, the field you're, interest, uh, you're interested in. And that's a way to um, make sure that the attribute is behaving as uh, you expect it to. But then once uh, you've uh, finished uh, testing, um, the next uh, step uh, you uh, have to do uh, is uh, to um, index it uh, across all records. So in this case, uh, I'm jumping to uh, one way of doing it uh, that's uh, accessible to, uh, again, your friendly local uh, Evergreen administrator of uh, doing SQL. Um, there's a stored function called metabib reingest record attributes. Uh, and you can use this uh, to say, for a given record ID, please reingest uh, or, you know, reindex all attributes uh, on a record or in the case of uh, my top example, just uh, ones uh, that I specifically name, uh, in this case, material base. And then to apply that uh, to the entire um, database, we can uh, you know, run this a function uh, for every record that in this case has the field and uh, subfield we're drawing from. Um, and there are uh, other ways of uh, doing this. Um, you could choose to do a complete uh, re-indexing on all uh, of fields of uh, the entire database, but that tends uh, to be overkill uh, just uh, for uh, defining a new attribute. Um, another uh, bit of uh, behind the scenes work is when you define a, a new attribute, uh, in order to use it as a filter, sometimes you may need to restart Evergreen services uh, in order to have the search engine recognize that, oh, hey, you've defined a new uh, filter. So moving on you know, to, you know, out of uh, searching, out of hand waving, onto display, um, one of uh, the things that you might want to do with a new attribute uh, is make it show up in the catalog. Um, so this would be an example of, you know, an LPAC uh, customized uh, to display the 340 subfield A. Um, now, of course, your user experience uh, librarian uh, may well have input uh, on a label that makes uh, more sense uh, to patron than material base. But let's, uh, you know, jump into how this was uh, done. So 
Yeah, I should have mentioned that uh, this uh, presentation is uh, aimed both at cataloging the staff and at uh, you know, evergreen system in the staff and to uh, the happy folks uh, who wear uh, both hats. Um, so in this case, um, for um, a, you know, you know, looking at uh, the OPAC uh, template on the server for record uh, details, this is a bit of uh, logic saying, okay, do we have attributes uh, uh, that are called material bases? If so, let's uh, display it. Uh, let's give it a uh, label called materials uh, base, material bases. And then let's uh, display all of uh, the values. The atras material base dot join is a saying, uh, please uh, display all of uh, the attribute uh, values separated uh, by commas. Now you might ask, okay, material bases, uh, that sounds like it's coming from the record attributes uh, uh, I've uh, been talking about. And it sure does. Sadly, no, uh, it's uh, coming uh, from uh, a different uh, mechanism. And that's if uh, we look at uh, the evergreen uh, more, uh, you know, OPAC template uh, for more utilities, um, the bit of code that's extracting the 340 subfield A uh, is actually, um, you know, looking at the entire mark record uh, as expressed in XML, using the XML find nodes uh, to extract all 340 subfield A values, and then uh, sticking them into a list uh, that uh, we can, uh, we can uh, display later. So, you know, this is an example of, um, you know, cases where, um, there is more, more than one way to do uh, things uh, in Evergreen. So record attributes that you define in server administration uh, work in search, work in filtering, um, but the display uh, is more driven by what uh, the OPAC templates are extracting out of uh, the uh, complete uh, mark record. So, you know, two different mechanisms, uh, and it does mean that, um, you know, if you're using uh, a given attribute, both uh, for display and for display, uh, both for search and uh, for display, uh, that uh, you're uh, going to have to deal with two mechanisms and uh, keeping uh, them uh, in sync. But that said, um, not ultimately um, too troublesome uh, in the default case of um, you know picking up one of the new RDA subfields and making uh, use of it. So, for a, a complete uh, change of uh, pace, um, I'll next to move on to talking a bit about located uh, URIs. Um, and this is uh, something that's um, particularly important uh, for consortial users of Evergreen uh, that use, uh, that load uh, electronic resource records into uh, their catalog. And of course, most of the time, it would be grand uh, to say that um, your electronic resource subscriptions and their pricing meant that uh, the consortium could uh, buy everything for all of their libraries. Uh, in practice, uh, though, um, you know, that's not always possible or uh, feasible. Uh, and of course, uh, different libraries have uh, different uh, communities that uh, they need uh, to serve. Um, so what the located URI mechanism does is say, you have an a URL for an electronic resource, um, you, know, you know, that's, uh, you know, stored in an, in an 856 field, um, URL and subfield U, of course. And then you can add a subfield nine, or you can add multiple subfield nines, 
uh, that have the short name of uh, the organizational units uh, that that electronic resource you know, belongs to or should be displayed for. And those uh, control what shows up uh, in the electronic resources uh, box in uh, the public uh, catalog. Um, the combination of what um, org units the subfield nine specifies as well as uh, what you've uh, configured uh, for the um, search uh, context uh, for each uh, library. So what are some implications of this? One, fixed uh, fields matter. They've always mattered, um, but um, there of course have been many um, cases where fixed uh, fields haven't necessarily been fully used uh, by software. Also, in one sense, the definition of a fixed field has expanded. Almost all of the new RDA tags um, have implicitly or explicitly controlled values associated uh, with them. Um, so if you look at fixed field as you know, the concept more of uh, not necessarily fixed position, but a field that has a relatively small controlled vocabulary associated with it, you have a lot more to play with. Um, cleanup and enhancement of projects um, matter uh, because fixed field matters, uh, fixed fields matter, but uh, it also um, is, you know, something where you can turn a uh, you know clean up a project not just into something that gives you consistently uh, consistency but drives uh, additional functionality in uh, your catalog and also if you want to filter uh, something uh, you can uh, do it uh, with no coding required uh, and uh, you know relatively little effort uh, on uh, the part of uh, your uh, uh, friendly local evergreen uh, system. So to recap, um, you know, record attributes uh, can be uh, used out of, out of the box, uh, but you can also customize them and use them to drive searching and filtering. XPath, uh, which is uh, what the, the OPAC template uh, and its uh, fine nodes uh, invocation was using drives a display uh, for these uh, sorts of attributes and located your eyes uh, driving electronic resource visibility and like I mentioned at the beginning this is uh, just a scratching uh, the surface of uh, what you can do with uh, mark records and evergreen uh, beyond uh, just what's in uh, the uh, box so thank you uh, for your time and attention. And uh, I think uh, we have uh, a uh, you know, couple minutes left uh, for any questions. I'm not seeing any questions with hands raised or anywhere. Lots of love in the chat. Okay, well, uh, again, thank you uh, for uh, your time uh, and attention. And yes, um, the uh, cat uh, you uh, just uh, saw uh, is uh, indeed uh, the, um, uh, is indeed uh, George. Uh, uh, apparently, um, uh, there was a memo going out that uh, every uh, every uh, present every presenter during this uh, conference uh, would be issued a, a new kitten. Um, so um, here uh, you go. Um, 
All right, so um, somebody asking a question, uh, I would like directions uh, with the screenshots uh, for uh, creating the record attributes. Um, so the uh, presentation uh, will be uh, recorded uh, and available on YouTube. Uh, and uh, these slides uh, will be made available on uh, the Evergreen website. Um, but uh, I can also um, expand a bit uh, elsewhere on going through all of the steps uh, required uh, to define uh, a new record uh, attribute. All right, um, another question. When is the cat photo exchange a portion of uh, the conference? Um, well, uh, there is uh, indeed a social event uh, later on in uh, the conference. So uh, there's uh, your opportunity. All right, and with that, um, uh, again, thank you uh, for uh, your attention, and uh, we can uh, take uh, you know twelve minutes uh, before moving on to the next uh, session in this uh, track. Thanks, Galen.